I uh, thank you, musicians. I, I dare say the last song was a rebuke for me because I was praying and intermeddling with the Lord and trying to receive whatever he might say and had so many notes. And there's a section on there that talked about how He's the Lord over all the earth. And I said, ah, that doesn't really apply to this message today. And, and there was another one that says, the, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Ah, that doesn't really apply. And then the song is, if the Lord would say, oh, you going to say what applies and what does not? You don't even know what songs that I have laid on the hearts of the praise and worship team. And because you want to be in the same vein and you not so much, I'm going to have my servant sing that song and you are going to get a whole different message. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus, who is like you? Oh, I don't even know. I don't even no, I know I'm supposed to be a little dignified and have some class. I mean, I, after all, I did wear an orange tray today. <laughs> However, God has a way of speaking to his people. He has a way of speaking to his people. Giving honor to God, who is the head of my life saints, my brothers and sisters, giving honor to my deliverer, my savior, my healer, my teacher, my master, the one who makes me to understand the forgiver and yes, lover of my soul, giving honor to him who woke me up this morning and said, all right, today is the day. Open your eyes, open your mouth. Come and walk before me. I know you in your pajamas. Walk before me anyway. I, the Lord, have commanded it. Giving honor to him who nothing is pure in his sight. And yet he loves with a love that creation itself marvels at the love of the Lord Jesus. Giving honor to the one that people try and imitate and copy and never even scratch the surface of the surface, giving. I could give honor to God. Can I give a little honor to God? I wasn't always saved. I wasn't always saved. I'm the person that God had to reach down in the pit and pull up and say, be alive. Have your sins washed away. I can say I didn't deserve it. And he loved me. Anyway, 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 the sweet love of the Lord Jesus. Anybody know about that love of the Lord? I mean, has it ever just touched you, made a difference, stood all out, and you found out, wow, ain't nothing I can compare to that. No love song, no sonnet, no story, no other Thing going on can compare to the sweet love of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Giving honor to him. <sighs> giving honor to you, God. Giving honor to you. Mm. <sighs> Giving honor to his servants and those who have faithfully held on to his word, to his truth, and keeping it down through the ages, even at the cost of their lives, even at the cost of being burned at the stake and fed to lions, boiled in oil, made mockery of, cast out, losing jobs, losing relationships. And yet the word of God was so pure to them. They would say, even as Job said, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Mm. 
giving honor to all of those who've held that word there, all the way down to the founding of this ministry, all the way down. And saints, giving honor to all of y'all this morning in the presence of the only one true and wise God who said, God, I come to you this morning, and I expect you to do what you said you were going to do, Amen. giving honor to y'all. We've had a wonderful time. I, 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 well, I say I've had a wonderful time. I, I don't know if I could speak for everybody. Talking and going through the message of the churches from the book of Revelations, the message of the churches. We've had a, a really wonderful time. And our theme this month, we're still going to be talking about the message of the churches, but not so much today. And our theme this month goes along with harvest time. And it's from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, and verse number 10. And the Bible says here, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now. Herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour... Mm, Pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Prove me if I won't do it. I think you know where this message is going today. Prove me. If we could bow our heads for just a moment. And Lord God, we come before you and we thank you for what you have given us already. Just your presence, God. And what is there that compares, but nothing compares to you. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the blessings that you continually pour out as though we deserve it. No, you just love us so much you want us to have it, God. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. And God, as we come to go over uh, the sermon part of our worship, God, I uh, ask first of all, that this your servant be out of the way. No hindrance, no throttle, no, no, not even to touch it, Lord. And then, Lord, we ask purely, as you said in your word, that it would surely go forth to do that which you send it to do. It would accomplish a task and not return unto you void. This we lay before you, we ask and claim in Jesus' name, amen, amen. I wanted to cut some of the message out because I said to myself, you know, it could go long, and people tell me when it go long, so I said, I'll cut it out, and then the Lord says, <clears throat> when I tell you to cut, cut, when I tell you to let it stay, stay, <sighs> amen. So our theme for today, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I, if I will not pour out, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room to receive it. October, first Sunday in October, and here we are. Well, you, you, you could say, why is this message in the middle of the time that we're going through the seven churches, Brother Parrish? Don't you know? Keep some continuity. I mean, we've talked about the church of Ephesus and them leaving their first love. We've talked about the church of Smyrna and how the persecution was great. We've talked about Pergamum and how they held on to the doctrine of Balaam. These are powerful messages. And then last week, we talked about, th talked about Thyatira and how they had the spirit of Jezebel allowed it to be in the church. Brother Parrish, we need to go on. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, we surely will. But we want to have and realize that all of the gospel works together. All of the gospel works together. I don't think I uh, got across on that one. 
We might have our favorite scriptures. We might have our favorite stories. We have, might have some parts that are harder to understand than some of the others. But there is only one God. And he don't contradict himself. So his word is pure. All of it. And all of his word works together. All of his word works together. So October, as we said, is the month of harvest. And what does harvest mean anyway? I'm a city boy. I'll just say that. I'm a city boy. And uh, we ain't have no harvest down, down in the hood. At least we didn't have a harvest for crops. We might have, <laughs> people might have been taking other things, but anyway. And what does harvest mean? Harvest means to gather in, as in gathering in a crop. It also means to accumulate or to bring in a store of stuff. It also means to bring in a store of. Now, following uh, any time of sanctification, there should be a time of manifestation. Sanctification, you prepare yourself, you separate yourself after sanctifying yourself for whichever the purpose is. People do that for everything from sports to relationships. They do. They sanctify themselves. But this was a relationship with the Lord. After sanctification has to come manifestation. And anyone who's ever taken a test, they know that you, you know that there is a time of preparation. You have to prepare for the test. And if you prepare for the test adequately, you have a time of manifestation. You have a time of seeing the results. If you don't prepare for the test adequately, you also have some results. They may not be the results that you desired, but your lack of preparation also shows then the manifestation of that lack of preparation. To quote Russell Wilson, yeah, I'm, I'm going there for a minute. A separation comes from preparation. Separation, he was talking about separation from mediocrity, from me being mediocre. Separation from just business as usual comes in my preparation. That's what Mr. Russell Wilson said, and I'm not preaching his message. I'm just saying it's something that he said that stands out, and it's a good thing to remember. It's a good thing to remember. Separation comes from my preparation. And yet you can take that and apply that all over the place. So that was our intro today. Part one is background to Malachi. Now, uh, I want to say a thing that's going to be consistent over the two months that we're going through the churches. And that theme simply is, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. He that hath an ear, not just an ear, but an ear to hear, an ear to hear. And yes, once again, we're talking about it comes in preparation. Let them hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. So as we have mentioned uh, this scripture verse that is our theme, I'd like to give a little bit of background on the text here today. So it is reported that the prophet Malachi lived in the time of Nehemiah. Hmm. And uh, there's so much to go over on that. They have so much debate. You only see the name Malachi mentioned once in the whole entire Bible. But you do see some of the prophecies that he said come forth. That's what even the Lord himself talked about one of the prophecies. And that's, behold, I will send forth my messenger to prepare the way. The Lord himself showed that, showing that this was prophecy spoken by the Malachi which incidentally means the messenger. But if we could pick up here in Nehemiah chapter 10, we're going to go over verse 37 and 39. We're going to do a little back, uh, background text to just set the stage for this. Because sometimes 
Even Christians get this part wrong. So from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, verses 37, starting at 37 to 39, and that we should bring forth and that we should bring the first fruits of our dough and our offerings and the fruit of all manner of trees of wine and of oil unto the priest to the chambers of the house of our God and the tithes of our ground unto the Levites that the same Levites might have the tithes in all the cities of our tillage. So there was a purpose of bringing things into the storehouse of the Lord. Verse 38. And the priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites when the Levites take tithes. And the Levites shall bring up the tithes of the tithes unto the house of our God, to the chambers, to the, into the treasure house the treasure house in God hmm. for the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring forth uh, bring the offering of the corn of the new wine <coughs> of the new wine you know where I'm going brother Antonio yeah the new wine it's wonderful to have so many uh that God has called that help defend our nation today. Amen. Could y'all stand, please? Could y'all stand? I neglected to do this earlier. We would like to recognize you who are paying right now the price for us. Thank you so much. And we ask richly that God would infuse your life with that which he has for you all. Amen. Thank you all. You know what? I don't know all of y'all. You know, could you, could you just say your name? I'm sorry, your whole name and where you're from? Joshua Nichols from? Of course you're from Texas. <laughs> okay, next please. Omar C. say North Carolina. Yes, please. B.B. Gonzalez, New York. Of course, you're from New York. <laughs> a familiar face. Uh, who might you be and where are you from? <laughs> yes. From Florida. We pray for your people. Any of your family that are down in Florida, then hopefully they've been kept out of harm's way. But we've heard that Ian was very destructive. Amen. Please. Gabriel Silva. What's your middle name? Gabriel and Michael in the same body. You, you catch that? You catch that? <laughs> from upstate New York. Amen. Welcome. And please? Sunny Bar from Arizona. We thank you all for coming in attendance. We praise God for you. Thank you so much. You may be seated. <laughs> so uh, this, this in verse 39, if I could go back to that. The children of Israel and the children of Elias to bring the offering of the corn and the new wine. <sighs> That's going to have to be a message sometime, that new wine. Some of y'all know what we're, 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 we're talking about. Of the new wine and the oil into the chambers where are, where are the vessels of the sanctuary. And the priests that minister and the porters and the singers. And we will not forsake the house of our God. That was the setting. That was the setting. Chapter 10. Well, 11 years later, something else happens. From Nehemiah chapter 13 and starting at verse 6. But in all this time was not I at Jerusalem, Nehemiah speaking, by the way. For in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave of the king. And I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Eliashib did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. In the house of God. He got a little bit of a, uh, what do you want to call it? You could say a a man's flat, uh, you could say a man cave, a little dwelling place where he would keep himself up. Eli Eliashib, in the court 
of the house of God. And verse, 30, uh, verse number eight. And it grieves me sore, therefore I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers. And thither brought I again the vessels of the house of God. Eleven years. Eleven years. They went from, we're going to do all these things and, and pay our tithes, offerings. We're going to esteem God. We're going to have a clean place. Eleven years later, they let an evil man come in, and they turn, had their hearts turned, and they polluted. It'd be like, it'd be like, Come in here on a Sunday and find out that all the cheers are gone. They got a couple of, what do you call those, futons in here. And they got a, 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 one of those, uh, you know, big giant screen TVs in the middle. And they got them all around. And everybody's looking at something not godly. Let's say it like that. What could you be looking at godly in the house of the Lord? But everybody's looking at something that ain't, that ain't good. And they, they ain't dressed like they're ready for any kind of worship unto God. You know, and you could go on and on and on and on and on. That's what this was like. And so Nehemiah saw fit to clean up the house of God. Get all, kick Tobias out. Kick all his stuff out. And now present a cleaning the house of God. And uh, verse number 10. And I perceived that the portion of the Levites had not been given them for the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled every one to his field. Trying to survive. Trying to survive. Left off the work of the house of God. Just trying to survive. Verse 11. Then contended I with the rulers and said, <clears throat> why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Why is the house of God forsaken? And verse 12. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasuries. Setting a tone of returning back to God's service and worship. And this is for a reason. It wasn't about the new wine and the corn and the oil. It wasn't about that. I'm going to talk about what this was about. Part two. So part one was the background to Malachi, and part two here is it begins with relationship. It begins, saints, with relationship. Whatever they thought it was about, it wasn't about that. It begins with relationship. Uh, from Malachi chapter 1, verse number 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord, yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the, the Lord, yet I loved uh, Jacob? The statement is here that God says, I love you. I love you. And they turn around to God and say, Phew. they don't say, oh, oh, really, Lord, where do you love us? No, they say, really? Where are you loving us? You see, this was a poor time in Israel. And they challenged God, challenged him. And in him telling them, I love you. And he tells them. You know what? Jacob had two sons. I mean, Jacob, Jacob had a brother named Esau, but I love Jacob. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I love Jacob. And so this is not just a situation. This is two parties describing or defining their relationship. So the one party is saying, I love you. What can I do for you? I want to help you. I want us to be together. I want to be closer. And the other party is, really? All right, it's time for you to ante up because we ain't feeling it. It's a situation 
that is defining relationship here. And uh, so it goes on as it sets this stage in verse number six. We're going to skip down because it's, it's, an, it's an entire thing that gets presented. And the message now takes the direction addressing the priest. So he told all of Israel, I love you. And now he's addressing the priest. Verse number six, a son honoreth his father. I'm sorry, chapter one, verse number six. A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If I then be a father, where's, where's, where's mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear, saith the Lord of hosts? O priests that despise my name, and ye say, wherein have we despised your name? This is what you call not receiving correction. Well, God, break it down for me because I don't really necessarily agree with you trying to tell me the almighty speaking to his people as though they deserve to be spoken to. Verse number seven. Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar and ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? And that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. The table of the Lord is contemptible. What did you say, uh, Pastor Malk, a couple of times this morning? It's about an attitude. It's about an attitude in the relationship. Now, to say contemptible, let's break that one down a little bit. Contemptible would mean disesteemable. In other words, it was esteemed at one time, and now it is esteemed not so more. It's been taken away, not esteemed nowhere near like what it used to be. In other words, value of the Lord's table is not so important. That, that has been taken away. Now, saints, it's the duty of the priests to teach the people. But if they had this attitude of the Lord's table isn't so special, what would they be teaching the people? What would they be teaching? They couldn't be teaching that it's a holy thing. They could not because they didn't call it and hold it holy. They couldn't be teaching that it's special. This is the place you ought to go because they were not. And the Lord says, you have despised me. So, chapter two. And we're just doing, we're just doing this, just trying to get to the rest part of the message. And yes, I am keeping an eye on the clock. <laughs> so, the Lord rebukes the priests. Malachi chapter two and verse number one. And now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. What, uh, what it must be like to know that a certain message is from God to you, right? And now, O oh priests, this commandment is for you. Verse number two, if you will not hear and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. And I will curse your blessings, yea, I have cursed them already, because you do not lay it to heart. So, yes, God does care. God does care. And they would say, you, 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 it, would be, it would be easy to think that this is about judgment. It would be easy to think that, to fall right into that trap. Wouldn't it? Oh, they were messing up, and God says, ka -chow! But let's read what he says. He says, if you will not hear and if you will not lay it to heart, meaning this thing ain't over, you still got a chance. Why? Because God is about relationship. 
He is about relationship. He ain't trying to look for something to cut people off. He's trying to have people restored and loving him. He's given a chance. Yes, he is. Even the priest. And, you know, uh, if we allow ourselves to think that that's all this is. It's been the same message since the garden, since the creation, since the very beginning. It's been the same message. I want to have you with me. I want to have relationship with you. It's the same message. Adam, Eve walked with God in the garden. What that must have been like. Mm. And so, uh, <laughs> and so if anybody says, well, I'm glad I'm not a priest, that, uh, <clears throat> that doesn't apply to me, Brother Parrish, so just mosey on along. Yeah, you, you can say that, but I mean, in the book of Peter, it does mention how he's called us to be a peculiar people. And he doesn't stop there. He says a royal what priesthood yeah oh if you got the name of the lord jesus christ over your heart if you got his spirit dwelling within you you are part of a royal priesthood that's a whole nother lesson but yes you are part and i'll tell you it's nothing to be afraid of it's a wonderful thing. If, if you're here and saying, well, I've been thinking about it, but maybe not. I'm going to tell you flat. It's a wonderful thing to have God in you and you being part of his royal priesthood. Ah, it's amazing to have that as a calling. It's amazing to have him as your God to turn to him and fill you up over and over and over again. And when you trip and fall and mess up and you're down on the ground to have him come over and pick you up and love you from the ground all the way back to when you're on your feet. It's amazing. So that part, the devil don't get no space on. You know, I, uh, if you've been around me for uh, a while, some of, some of y'all have, and uh, <clears throat> you might have heard me tell a story about me, my mom, 32 cents, a tasty cake, a skyrocket popsicle, and my cousin. If you've been around me for any while, you've heard me tell that story. But I don't think everybody has heard it, and I need to tell part of it for this message. So, <clears throat> I'm about to tell my age for real. <laughs> in the mid-60s, yeah, in the mid-60s, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Some people, their parents weren't born by then. In the mid-60s, I was, oh, five or six years old, and uh, I had this dream. I had this dream of being able to have a butterscotch crimpet tasty cake and a skyrocket popsicle at the same time. I was five or six, actually, I was six. So my dreams weren't that lavish just wanting to have my tasty cake and my popsicle. But it was going to cost 32 cents. And 32 cents, when you're six years old, was hard to come by back in the 60s. 32 cents was a lot more than it is now. I could have got a tasty cake and a popsicle. Now I can't get half of either for 32 cents. So I did my diligence, holding on to the little bit of money I would get. I would save, and yeah, I would save and if you want to say I could count money when I was six years old, when you got a tasty cake and a skyrocket popsicle involved, you learn how to count to 32 cents. You learn that lesson, I'm just saying. And so I remember the day that I got it, the day that I got it, I went right up to the corner store, I bought it, and then as I bought my little butterscotch cream, and they were a lot, they weren't really little back then, they were bigger, but that 30, the, the, the Tasty Cake was 20 cents. The Skyrocket Popsicle, that was 12 cents. 
So together, that was 30. Yeah, this is how big it was. It, it's still in my memory how much that stuff cost. And anyway, I got it at the store, and I'm coming back home. And somewhere along the line, I had mentioned to my mom, I'm going to the store so I can get me my Tasty Cake and my Skyrocket Popsicle. It was the ones that, you know, the top was red, the middle was white, and the bottom was blue, and it was the shape of a rocket. Ooh-wee, I was going to be good. Got it. I got home, and as soon as I got home, my mom said, now give one of them to your cousin. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to tell on myself. <laughs> and I said, no. And she said, give one to your cousin. And I said, no. Give one to your cousin. No. And she asked me again, more stern. He, he didn't save up the money. He didn't put forth nothing in it. No, it's mine, 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 mine. Like the seagulls in that cartoon. Mine, 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 mine. Is that what it was? I've only seen that clip. Somebody had to show me personally. Like they had a message for me. <laughs> and so I told her, if I can't have them both, then I'm not going to have any of them. Here. Exactly. Exactly. Was this about my mom trying to discipline me? No. This was about my mom trying to get me to have perspective in my life. What things to give great love and what things to give a small love. And here I was loving a tasty cake and my skyrocket popsicle more than my cousin, who was four years old and didn't have money for either. That, saints, was about relationship. I wish I could say I got that one kicked. I wish I could say I got that one completely licked. Yeah, you know. Yeah. God's working on <coughs> me. Thank you. You knew where that was going. God is still working on us who will listen. On us who will listen. And part three, last part. God continues to define our relationship. He continues to define our relationship. Malachi chapter 3, verse number 6. <clears throat> For I am the Lord, and I change not. What a powerful verse. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Um, I got a quick little sidebar here. We, we're going to read down through uh, to verse 11. But I got a quick sidebar here. Now, if you spent any time in the Old Testament, you would have noticed that sometimes God addresses his people as Israel, and sometimes he dresses, addresses his people as Jacob. And you, you, I, I, I wondered about it for quite a bit. But you see, sometimes we're in the spirit, and we receive the promises of God, and we're doing great. That's Israel. Sometimes we're in the flesh. That's Jacob. And so you see God addressing both, and they are the same nation. It's kind of a little bit like uh, <clears throat> when I was doing what my mom would tell me, she would call me Snookums. And when I wasn't doing, yeah, Snookums, that's an old word, old, old word. And when I wasn't doing what she would tell me, she would say, Perish Charlie Lee! <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit like that. Either way, either way, it's still about relationship. Trying to get, trying to get God's people, trying to get me on God's path. Verse number seven. 
Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. Mm. Saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? And God comes right off, comes right out. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. In tithes and offerings. You're cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation has robbed me. The whole nation has robbed God. Now, what is that like? You, you ever see a nation not be blessed and then you don't see any prayer and any homage and sacrifices? You don't see any of that in an appeal to appear, appeal to God. Robbing God, cursed with a curse. Verse number 10. Bring ye all, tith all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now. Uh, prove me. Try me. Watch me. And so God is trying to tell them, this ain't about your money. This ain't about your oil. This ain't about all the material things that you got. This is about our relationship. Don't you know what I could do for you? I got your blessings right here waiting for you. And you keep holding back in our relationship. You keep holding back. You look at everything else but me, Jacob. And then he says, prove me now, now, not years into the future. Prove me now, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And you would say, oh, blessing, I could always use a blessing. This ain't the kind of blessing that God is describing. The kind of blessing God is ascribing. He says, you won't even have room enough to keep it all. It's going to be so much. It's going to go all the way in your hallway, out in the street. People are going to know it because you're going to be wearing it because you can't contain all of it on the inside. It's going to show up on your job. It'll show up in your school. It'll see it when you're at the store. It'll be in your car. I will. You know, I was uh, sharing down in Virginia, I don't know, a year and a half ago. I was down there, and uh, Brother Jim Otteson, he was leading a, uh, a worship time on Sunday evening. And I was there because, you know, with Sunday evening worship, I'm in for that. And he said, he said to me, he said, uh, Brother Parrish, do you have anything you want to share? Hey, how well do you know me? And I went up there, and I shared a little, about, I shared a little bit about something else, but I also put that scripture in there. And they have Q&A right there, too. Uh, so as I shared that about there will not be, I'll pour you out a blessing. Uh, Sister Ulysse, she said, why do you say pour you out a blessing? And I was like, well, because that's what I was reading in the scriptures. That's what it says. I'll pour you out a blessing. And she said, no, 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 no. Maybe that is in your language. In my language, it says deluge. Deluge. I was back on my heel. Now, for those of you who don't know what a deluge is, let me tell you what a deluge is. We have a deluge. Uh, you'll see them in freezers, and they hold back a fire system, you know, when they have sprinklers and stuff. And they have what they call a deluge valve. And that, that thing is held in check. Now, if there was a fire inside an area where you, where you don't want water at, but it's an emergency, what would happen is it would pop the sprinkler head, air would come off the valve, there'd be another heat tape that would trip, 
and this valve, oh, it's about eight inches. So it's not going to be a sprinkle to put out the fire. There's going to be a flood. There's going to be oh, there a whole 16 inch. Yeah, the pipe, the pipe is about eight inches, but the deluge is about 16 to 18 inches. The, yeah, yeah. And so what they mean when they're going to put out the fire, they mean business. They're going to overwhelm the place. And she was saying, hey, in my language, it, it's, it's not have a little container and pour. In my language, it's open the windows of heaven and it pours out. <sighs> Sister Ulysse, Sister Ulysse, from, from the audience, she was correcting and instructing, and I, and I got a clearer picture of what the windows of heaven must look like. What must, I mean, you think they're about that size? After all, they're not for this, they're not for a little sanctuary. They're for heaven. The last time I read about the windows of heaven being opened, the earth was flooded. <laughs> so, God says, and I'm going to use her word for, for just for today. God says, and I will deluge out a blessing for you. <laughs> that is going to be hard to hold. In fact, he says that you won't be able to hold it all. Verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. This, is this about money or, or, or merchandise at all? Absolutely not. God is telling them, I got so much more to give you. You can't, you can't even phantom it in your mind. But I'm asking in this relationship, I'm doing my part to show you I love you. I'm just waiting on you. I got the blessing. It's already here. All I have to do is open the latch of the window and you are just going to be deluged. I'm waiting on you. Mm. I, I, I would like to have... Uh, that kind of uh, blessing. So for all of anybody who might struggle, and I'll, I'll admit I'd struggled before time to time with giving tithes and offerings for all those who look at heaven to give up what they have uh, to the Lord and be having a little less for themselves. God is looking for us to make that choice. He, he, he really is. He's looking for us to make that decision. He, you know what God is looking for? He's looking for you to say, God is. Fill in the blank. God is my rock, my salvation, my helper, my deliverer. He is everything that I need. He is a spiritual healer. He, is, he, he exceeds my... Fill in the blank of what God is for you. That's what he's looking for. And he will put more in that blank for you. That's what he's looking for. He will put more in that blank. God is filling the blank. God is. I can tell you what he is for me. I can tell you he's a forgiver because I done messed up many a time. I can tell you he's a long sufferer because I'm hard to deal with. It's a lot of times I don't like myself. I, I, I don't. Sometimes I look at me and I say, what, what in the world's wrong with you? I can tell you what else he is for me. He's a restorer and a repairer of breaches and things that I done messed up. He will restore them. That's what he is. For, you know what else he is? He's a teacher. Things that I don't know. You know what he is? Can I tell you something else that he is? He's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. It wasn't but what? What is this month? August? Is this October? I need to ask him to help me with that memory. <laughs> but it wasn't, what, back in January. Back in January, where I just didn't know I had COVID so bad. 
I just didn't know for a while. Couldn't breathe, couldn't catch a breath. I just didn't know. And I thank everybody that went to that God. Some people gave me uh, medicine and advice, drink more water, blah, 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 blah. And some people said, I'm praying for you. Praying for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I'm here today. Amen. Amen. That's what that's just some of what he is for me. <clears throat> so for anyone here in the Valley of Decision today, I would only say if you're wondering if to give the Lord is worth it, I'll say you have a strong choice today. And that's the ability to give unto the Lord and see what he has for you. But if you say, well, it ain't worth it, and I could, I, I've been there before saying it ain't worth it, then keep what you have and allow the Lord's blessing to sail on by. I, I, I be, I'm just being honest. And no, there's not going to be an offering plate pass. You don't have to worry about that. You know, we have a free will offering. You can give online. You can give in the back. You can, you can do any, either one of the two, but no, no place being pressed. You pass. You don't have to worry about that. But the choice is ours. And no, it is not just, you notice they didn't even mention money. They talked about of what you have, being able to give to the Lord. <clears throat> and giving to the Lord sometimes is as simple as, well, I have an hour. I'm going to go visit somebody. I'm going to go call somebody that needs encouragement. God, you've laid it on my heart more than once. Let me get around to being faithful to that. Amen. That is an offering unto the Lord. Yes. And sometimes the offering is maybe a little money. Maybe you know somebody needs a little bit of help and you have, you've been blessed to help. And you say, you know, Lord, thank you for what you've given me. And in Jesus' name. Amen. We're talking about proving the Lord. This morning. <clears throat> so, uh, as I wrap up here, already gone just about over time. I got about two minutes. <clears throat> so, did you know? Did you know that true love gives? True love, agape love, agape love. Does it hold all up and get all selfish about it? True love gives, helps, blesses, changes situations. True love gives. Now, I know some people, they have the kind of love that just takes, 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 takes. What else you got for me? I, I didn't get it all. Let me come back and get some more. That's the kind of love some people might have, but that's not God's love. He proved it. He proved it. <clears throat> Nehemiah 1 and 9, the Bible says, but if you turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost parts of the heaven, yet will I gather them from there, from thence, and will bring them into the place that I have chosen to set my name, I will bring them to where they'll be mine. True love gives, saints, last scripture, to prove that true love gives. For God so loved the world that he gave, gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Give the Lord a praise.